Good afternoon and welcome to the Lots of Helping Hands webinar series. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Brooks Kenny, and I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at Lots of Helping Hands. Um, I see that attendees are rolling in, but we are going to go ahead and get started. On your screen, um, by this time, you should be seeing the first title slide that says Lots of Helping Hands webinar series. We are really delighted to have you all joining us today. We have um, close to 200 people who have registered to participate with us this afternoon, and we're delighted by that. I want to just give you a brief background about our webinar series. It is specifically designed to support both the members and coordinators of Lots of Helping Hands community, and we are working on continuing to develop this series based on the feedback that we're getting from all of you. Um, and in addition, we are really eager to, to connect with you, to hear your feedback, to recognize uh, the challenges that you might be facing, to um, highlight new resources for you that might be valuable in your caregiving journey. Um, there's just a lot of different things that we can accomplish through the webinar, and this month in particular, we are staying very much focused on tips and features. We know that most of you participating on the call today are either coordinators or members of a Lots of Helping Hands community. There are some that are not yet um, involved with the Lots of Helping Hands community, but we are focusing our efforts today primarily on just the tips and features of using this service. We're going to go ahead and launch a poll to get us started in the spirit of uh, hearing back from you. We would um, love to know if any of you have participated in a Lots of Helping Hands webinar uh, prior to this month. So is this your first Lots of Helping Hands webinar? You can just let us know yes or no. And while you're answering that question, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our panelists um, as well. I want to share a bit of our philosophy here at Lots of Helping Hands. Each one of us at the organization is very much committed to understanding the specific needs and expectations and challenges that our members and coordinators face. And so as a result of that, it's part of our corporate philosophy that everyone participates in our member support outreach. Um, as many of you probably already know, we provide regular around-the-clock support via email and phone to anyone that needs help with their Lots of Helping Hands community. But it's very important to us that each of us are close to the needs of our members. And so today seemed like the perfect time to introduce you to Hal Chappell, our CEO and co-founder, who himself today is going to actually be walking us through a variety of tips and features, both for coordinators and members. And so in the months ahead, we hope you continue to join us, and we hope to continue to introduce you to more members of our team. So what we plan to review today we are not going to spend a lot of time on the Lots of Helping Hands overview um, because we know many of you are familiar with the service. The bulk of our time together will be on tips and features. We want to highlight the resources that we do have available for you inside your private Lots of Helping Hands community, and then wrap things up with Q&A. We will be breaking during one portion of the webinar to invite additional questions so that we don't uh, lose any questions that you may have halfway through our tips. So I'll let you know when that uh, time period is, and you can use the chat feature on the lower right of your control panel to include to ask any questions that you might have. So as many of you already know, the Lots of Helping Hands service is a caregiving coordination web service that allows family, friends, neighbors, colleagues, church and synagogue members, what we call someone's circles of community, to more easily assist with those daily tasks, whether it's meals, rides, shopping, visits, communication, all those things that become a challenge during times of medical crisis, caregiver exhaustion, or when caring for an elderly parent. And as you know, the service includes the immediate creation of a secure and private web-based community. Um, these features include a coordination calendar, that allows you to easily organize well-meaning offers of help, and we're going to highlight some tips on the calendar today. It also incorporates community building features, things that allow you to easily communicate with loved ones, share updates using announcements and message boards, create some own, your own customized features within the community that we're going to walk you through as well. 
And then finally, vital information. The vital information section allows you to safely store and retrieve information relevant to the community, and we're going to walk you through more detail about the vital information uh, this afternoon on our, on our TIPS discussion. Finally, just as a point of reminder, we know that most of our communities are created to support uh, caregiving situations, and that is our focus uh, today in the examples that we provide. But we did want to remind everyone that they can easily go to lotshelpinghands.com to organize volunteer efforts in the classroom, coordinate help for new parents, support military and veterans' families, and organize general volunteer efforts. So whatever reason you perhaps created your Lots of Helping Hands community, we want you to also always remember that it can be used to organize um, these other offers of help as well. So moving on to what we plan to review, we're going to move right into the tips and features of the service. And the first way that we're going to talk about this, as I mentioned, we know that many of you, and thank you for answering some of our preliminary questions prior to getting on the webinar today, we know that many of you on the call are coordinators. And in every community, just to make sure we're all clear, there are both coordinators as well as members. The lead coordinator is the person who first creates the community, but there can be many co coordinators in one Lots of Helping Hands community. Coordinators keep track of membership information for other members. They post new activities on the calendar. They receive the confirmation emails when someone volunteers for a task, and basically administer the private uh, community website. And so we will today begin with the tips for coordinators, recognizing that many of you are coordinators, and for those of you who are not, we know that you may at some point decide to create a community where you will be the lead coordinator. We oftentimes hear from folks who say, for example, I participated in a community for my uh, best friend who um, was dealing with a breast cancer diagnosis and um, it was a great experience and now I'd like to create a community to help organize help for my neighbor or to organize help for my child's classroom. And so where you might be a member one day, um, after learning more about the um, service or having your own personal experience, you may go on to create your own community and therefore be a coordinator. Um, so we think that these tips that we're going to be sharing will hopefully be relevant to all, and then we'll move into some member tips as well. So I'm going to introduce um, Hal Chapel now, and um, Hal is going to walk us through the coordinator tips for uh, this portion of the series. Hal, I'll turn it over to you, and welcome. Excellent. Thank you very much, Brooks. Uh, it's my pleasure to be able to join you during the webinar series this month. The first tip that we want to cover today is customizing your community. We're very aware at Lots Helping Hands that while we've provided a platform for people to create communities and organize help, that the needs of every community are, are different uh, depending on the particular situation. So the platform that we provided provides a default community when a community is created, but it allow, we've allowed for the coordinators of each community to go in and customize the community according to their needs. The ones that we're going to cover today are going to be the how to change the community name, how to change the community homepage. There's many different ways to do that. To customize the about this site when people click on, on the tab to learn about the community. Uh, community time zone, displaying the name of the community member on task signups, and then finally deciding whether or not you want to display the names of coordinators on the home page. So we'll take a look at, a, at uh, our demonstration community called Amelia's Helping Hands. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'll, I'll be Josh Chapman today. And Amelia is a, a woman of uh, uh, in her, in her mid-70s, and several of her adult children created this community. She has early onset uh, Alzheimer's disease, but she also recently fell and broke her hip. And they finally decided to create a community for it. the rest of the family members, some of Amelia's neighbors, and uh, other friends of both Amelia and, uh, and her adult children to help uh, with uh, take care of Amelia. First here, very quickly, I want to show you the geography of the community homepage itself. Uh, as you can see here, they've already put in a photo for Amelia here, um, at overriding what the default photo is. This is the place where the most recent announcements are displayed. Uh, and this is a, a summary, a two-month summary 
of the actual activities for this community. We're going to go to the administration tab to begin the customization. Only coordinators actually see this administration tab, so we'll click on it. And then under the administration tab, there are various tools for handling uh, members, for handling the calendar, and then for various options around the community, including customization. We're going to go under site options. We'll click here under site options. And immediately you can see uh, the, the options that are available for customization. The first here is I can change the name of the community if I wanted. I can change it from Amelia's Helping Hands to Team Amelia or, or anything else that I want. I'm going to keep it like this. Under About This Site, uh, this has already been customized. They've, they've put in their own photo. And uh, thank you for joining our community. Help our dear friend while uh, in dealing with Amelia's recovery. That's another place that, that this community could be customized. They've put in a, the a homepage photo that they want to show. When a community is first created, there's a set of standard photos that, that the system comes with. They could put in, so that's the, the standard photo. Uh, we could put in uh, uh, Hope. We can put in um, something like that. Additionally, because in this community, they've actually uploaded photos into the photo gallery, all of those photos are available for, the, for customization. So, for example, we can put in uh, our Amelia, and then, in fact, if we go and save changes, this is, uh, we're now back on the community homepage, and there's the custom uh, photo. We're going to go back, however, to the site options under the administration tab, and just show you a few more items for customization. The default for every community that's created is that the announcement section will display the most recent announcement that's been sent out to the community. But we can change that. We can actually make it a static announcement. So that a thank you email that went out back in 2009, or again, we can have it be the most recent announcement. So whenever an announcement is sent out, that is the announcement that will be displayed every time people sign in. We'll, we'll go back to that. Also, on the home page, we highlighted the calendar section that two-month summary of the calendar, but that can be changed. We could say uh, that on the home page we would like well wishes to be displayed. So I'll click on well wishes, and if I go ahead and save changes, now the next time that people sign into the community, instead of seeing the two-month summary of the calendar, they will see a display of some of the most recent postings to the well wishes. If I wanted to see the rest of them, I could click here and then it would just take me to the well wishes section. Again, uh, if we wanted to have it be the, the photo gallery, we can click on that and go down and save it. Oftentimes our support desk will get requests and it will, that changes the coordinators make aren't being saved and it's just because they, they often forget to click on save changes. We'll click on save changes here and now there's a summary showing of the photo gallery. So a few other things that you can do here on the site options page. One is to set what time zone you're in so that when the system sends out the auto-generated emails as reminders to people when they've signed up for a task or as a reminder that a commitment is, is occurring the next month, week, or, or day, it will be in the correct time zone. Two other things that where customizations can occur or are showing signups. That is, the default for the system is when people sign up for a task, and then other community members go in to actually look in, at the calendar, it will display the name of the member that signed up for the task. If coordinators can actually set the default to be that that name will not be displayed. And also whether or not the coordinators will be displayed on the home page. So I will, I'll show you that. Right now you can see these fictitious coordinators here. If we clicked on no, then those names wouldn't be there. Also, on the calendar, as you'll see, it says here that um, Megan Parker actually volunteered for uh, taking the garbage out on this particular date. And if the, uh, that had been turned off under the site options, it would just say that a volunteer is scheduled here. It would just say scheduled. The other things for customizations that we can talk about are these default community sections. 
the default community sections are the announcements in the calendar and vital information and so forth. They, some of those could actually be turned off and as well as adding new community sections. We will be talking today about uh, creating new community sections, but I just want to show you how, it, how these can actually be turned off. So for example, maybe for a given community you didn't want to display the well wishes. So we'll click on the administration tab and we're going to go to sections, announcements, and emails. And this will actually sh display all of the community sections that exist in the, in the community already. So let's say we didn't want to display vital information, uh, the, uh, the well wishes. Let's go back here to well wishes right, uh, right here. Uh, if I click on deactivate uh, and then I click on the home tab, it will take me to the community home page you'll see now that well wishes is not here anymore. I can go back and reactivate that if I wanted. And, I, and here it is, it's inactive, the well wishes. I can click on activate and it will now reappear. reappear. And here it is. I'm going to now move on to the, a discussion around using vital information. Vital information is a section where vital medical, legal, and financial information can be made available to community members on a need-to-know basis. Uh, while this is most often used in, a, in an elder care situation when the adult children want to be able to share uh, certain information with each other, we've also seen this feature used in many other types of communities. So let's, let's delve into it right now. I can click on vital information and uh, here's w where it is. Now, the vital information consists of many different types of subsections, basic information, uh, family and friends, uh, 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 favorites of the, of, the, of the patient or the family, favorite movies, favorite food, favorite uh, kinds of books that they like to read. The default is that, on that only the basics and uh, favorites will show to all members of the community. So if I were a regular member and I clicked on vital information, only I wouldn't see all of these other subsections. I would only see uh, the favorites and uh, the basics. But because I'm a coordinator, I'm actually viewing everything else. Now the two areas that I want to cover today for vital information are, uh, one, how to set permissions for these subsections, and then how do we actually add information into each one of these subsections. A lot of people are afraid, we've seen in communities, they're actually afraid to use vital information because they're worried about the security of the, of the information and who, who can see what. So let's take a look. I can, I can actually click on, on, uh, on any one of these. I'll click on the basics. And in this particular community, they've already added things such as the best times to call, the, the birthday, uh, email address, and, and so forth. Some of the other sections here that can actually be quite useful are, um, say, medications. When Amelia, when people sign up to take Amelia to a medical appointment, they can actually just, if, if they are, have the permission to view this particular subsection, they can actually just print this section and take it to the doctor with them so that uh, the, the medications are right there and ready for a, a medical appointment. I want to show you, though, how easy it is to actually add information first to the subsection. So here with favorites, we are going to click Add and Update. And now we can choose a particular category. So let's say it's, uh, it's food. And we want to say um, uh, Amelia and her family enjoy you know, chicken and uh, fruits and uh, all vegetables. Uh, then we can choose another, another favorite category. For example, under uh, music, we can say uh, classical and jazz. And now if we, if we save these changes, when we actually go down now and look at favorites, there it is. Under foods, we, we describe our foods and music in that manner. Now let's say that I actually want to change the default for some of these subsections. So under medical, 
uh, medications. I want other people to be able to see the, the medication. So I can click on permissions and it's telling me this is the, uh, this is the subcategory medications. And the default permissions, as you can see here, are that only coordinators can view, edit, post, and comment to this. But I, I, can, I can set it up so that all members can actually view it if I want it, but maybe I just want to add a special permission for a, give, for a particular member. In fact, uh, we know that uh, Megan Krauss is actually going to be taking Amelia to a medical appointment. So I can click on Megan Krauss and allow her to actually view this section. So when I save, save this, the next time that uh, Megan signs into the community and she clicks on vital information, in addition to seeing the basics and seeing favorites, she will also see medical conditions. So again, with vital information, uh, it can be used for not only just coordinators to look at the vital information uh, or, or designated, maybe not all coordinators, but designated coordinators, you can set the permit, coordinators can set the permission for both coordinators and members for who has the right to view various sections within vital information. Additionally, the, uh, the coordinators or designated members can have the right to update the subsections. And now I want to move to the next category, and that is sending emails to members. A lot of people have asked us questions about whether or not uh, emails can be send, sent to members. And early on in Lots of Helping Hands, we decided that everybody has many different types of email programs. We didn't need to make Lots of Helping Hands uh, another email program that they uh, had to worry about. So we, we decided that if people wanted to send emails in general, that they would use their, their regular email program. But there are ways that emails can be sent in the system. The way that most of you are familiar with probably is the auto-generated emails that are sent by the system. When people sign up for a task, the system sends a confirmation email to that member as well as to the designated coordinators. The system also sends out automated emails, uh, reminders, one month, one week, and one day in advance of a task so that community members don't forget the commitments that they've made. When a co a coordinators can actually send out announcements, when an announcement is, uh, is created, as we are doing here, we can, the coordinator that's sending out the announcement can actually designate whether this announcement will be sent as an email. Similarly, when an, a new activity is created by a coordinator, at the completion of the creation of that activity, the system will ask that coordinator if they want an email to be sent out to all the community members, letting them know that a new activity has been created and new tasks are available for sign-up. Those are the standard ways that the system sends out emails, but there are some other ways. Coordinators can go to the administration tab again. There are, uh, there are certain times where a coordinator would like to send an email to just a subset of the community members. So we can actually click on sections, announcements, and emails here. And under email messages, uh, uh, well, first of all, I can click expand, and I can see all of the emails that have been sent out by the system in this manual fashion. So there were certain test emails that were sent out at various times. I can actually uh, roll over one of these emails under the two column, and it will tell me the, all the people that, to whom the email was actually sent. So under weekday dinners, it was just sent to, to one person. But let's, let's click on email messages and, and see how this works. We'll send an email. So the first thing is I can choose if I wanted to send, if I want this email sent to the entire community, or if we want it to be to just selected members. In this case, I want an email sent to uh, just a few of the people to let them know there are some people in the community that I, I don't mind having them drive Amelia. She's my mother, and, and I, I, don't, I know that some of these people, although they have wonderful hearts, they may not be the best drivers. So I only want to let a few people know that I need someone to take my mother to a medical appointment tomorrow. So uh, you'll notice that some people are, are grayed out. These are people that have not yet signed into the community. So the first thing to know is that emails are only sent to community members that have actually signed in to the community the first time. That is, they've actually verified their email address. This, we've, we've created a system 
in this fashion because we don't want the system to be used for spam. So only somebody whose email has actually been verified is considered a, uh, a member in the community to whom new emails can be sent. So I wanted this particular email sent to Bailey Katzen and uh, Brooks, you'll get one, and to Julie Palermo. We will say um, immediate need for driver. And we can say, thanks, folks. We need someone to drive uh, Amelia tomorrow to a uh, doctor appointment. So, um, so instead of putting this on the calendar, this need, I can actually just send out the request to a few people uh, uh, that uh, I'm, I'm interested in, in receiving this, uh, this request. And now I'll send the email. And it tells me it's been created and it has been successfully sent. And uh, just to show you what happens here under uh, email messages under the, the admin tab, if I click on expand and you see the, here it is, the immediate need for driver. And when I roll over three members, it tells me there are the three members who actually received the email. I can also view it uh, and it will tell me the, uh, what it was, what the message was, and I can actually ask it to, sh to show me the, the names of the community members who received the email. Brooks, are we going to continue on with, uh, with these tips? Yeah, why don't we go ahead and do um, the creating that custom section as the last one, and then we can pause for Q&A. Great. So we have, we've talked about different ways to, to customize this community. And one of the ways that we mentioned is cr actually creating a new co community section. There's actually been a community section that's been created here. I can see that uh, in this community, they created a, uh, a new blog, Amelia's Updates. If we click on that, we can see uh, that um, this is the, one of the uh, adult children are actually blogging with uh, how Amelia is doing. Uh, but we actually want to create a new community section, and it's going to be there are a lot of out of, there are several out of town people uh, who really care a lot about Amelia and want to help the family. And actually, I'm going to show this in, in another community. Uh, if a person is a member, uh, there's a quick sidebar here. If a person is a member of more than one community, then they'll see this drop down menu here where they can actually switch back and forth among the various communities in which they're a member. So Josh Chapman is also a member of a community called Team Bob. I'm going to switch to Team Bob. Team Bob was created to help a soldier that deployed to Afghanistan. And when he returned, he was, uh, unfortunately, a wounded warrior. And the community was, uh, then was, is going to be used for um, his young family and, and, and his friends who want to support Bob and, and the family while they're, they're dealing with uh, the, the multiple injuries that, that Bob is uh, recovering from. Bob has and his family have many friends and family, and some of whom do not actually live in the same town. So the coordinators of this community, uh, Josh again, actually wanted to come up with a community section that talked about other ways that community members can help Bob's family. So we'll click on the administration tab. We'll click on sections, announcements, and emails. And we want to actually add a new section. There's different types of sections that can be created. You can add an another photo gallery. Maybe the family goes on a vacation uh, or there's a, a, a fundraising event and the community members have created photos and they just want to show a, a photo gallery of those, those particular photos. We can do a section of, of resources where there's documents or, or links to other websites that can be, that can be shown to, uh, to the community. For example, if there's a food allergy. In this particular case, though, we actually wanted to uh, create a page that that note that uh, people aren't going to be posting to, but just one time, and it just gives examples of other ways that the that out of town people can help the family. So we're going to click on general, and we will call it. Um, 
out of out of towners. We'll say many of you have asked how to help, even though you live. Here are a few suggestions, and uh, we will say, here are some you know uh, favorite restaurants in the area. So these people actually can bring a meal to Bob and his family, but they can order food and have it be delivered. So I, we can have a section here for um, you know different uh, different restaurants. Let's say, then we we other ways that they can help. It might be to purchase gift cards for the family for for grocery shopping or at the at the pharmacy uh, perhaps uh, other other vendors in the area so that's another way that that community members can help that are out of town another way is uh, to offer to help with uh, paperwork so this this is true for for any caregiving situation but certainly military members that are returning wounded, that there's so much paperwork and administrative work around. Um, and maybe we want to give some suggestions here, for example, um, uh, with uh, insurance uh, uh, issues or with uh, health, with uh, the uh, health, health providers. So we'll say this. And we actually want this to be viewed by all members uh, of the community. So we'll save this. And now if we go back to the home page, we'll see now that there's a new section called Out of Towners. And uh, from now on, anytime there's an update to, to, any, to that section, the next time that community members sign in, they'll see that it's actually been updated. When we click on it, there it is. And if I weren't a coordinator, if I were a regular member, I wouldn't see this edit button. Okay. Brooks? Back to you. Great. Thank, thank you so much, Hal. We're going to open it up for um, a brief Q&A for about five minutes, um, at, and we'll take a few questions specifically related to the tips that Hal just reviewed, either customizing your community, uh, sending emails to members, using vital information, creating custom sections, um, anything related to those tips um, specifically for coordinators. Um, we welcome you to chat with us using the chat feature um, in your toolbar and uh, we'll go ahead and reply or answer them. While we're waiting to see if any questions come in related to those specifically, um, I just wanted to reinforce that um, while Hal was able to share different features within the vital information section, for example, um, as well as one example of creating a custom section, we certainly can provide additional support to all of you via our member support. So we welcome your uh, follow-up questions and um, anything that might come to mind for your specific community. Um, it's hard to account for all the different examples that are certainly um, out there in the different ways we've seen the service being used. So please feel free to uh, continue to ask us questions via member support as well. I'm not seeing any questions coming through on the chat. Um, how are you seeing any on your end? Some, somebody asked the question, is the email feature best for calendar needs or can the, uh, this looks like it came from Barbara, or can the calendar automatically send out new needs? Uh, yes, the, the, uh, when a coordinator creates a new activity uh, for, for needs, once they are completed, uh, they completed creating that new activity, and I believe we actually did that, demonstrated how that's done in the uh, in the last webinar. Is that correct, Brooks? And that has been archived. Yes. Uh, but it, it, once a coordinator does create complete creating a new activity, the system asks if they ask the coordinator if they wish to have an email sent to all members of the community, letting them know that a new new needs have been posted. So in fact, uh, that would be, the, the system automatically will send that out. You don't have to use the email feature that we demonstrated today to, uh, to do that. And how, why don't you take one or two more? Um, okay. There are, there are a lot of questions here, but they are um, not related to uh, the features that we just demonstrated. So we'll, we'll come, do you want to come back to those books at the end? 
Sure, that's great. We'll come back to those and just to also um, remind folks that um, we capture all the questions and all the chats and poll responses from every webinar and we will send you personalized responses if we don't get to your question today. So please don't be concerned at all if, you, um, if your question is not answered. So I think in the interest of time, we will go ahead and move on to the next section where we, um, we're going to just review a couple of key uh, anecdotes related to members, um, specifically uh, resetting your password, um, adding meals after sign up um, or other, other activities after sign up, and being a member of more than one community. Um, and these really came out of our member support team, recognizing some of the more common questions that we get from, uh, from members. And so even as coordinators, it's probably helpful for you to know in case you're asked by community members um, things related to one of these topics. So Hal, I'll turn it back over to you. Okay, thank you. So resetting, resetting your password, there's two different ways that that can be done. The first is uh, if you want to change your password, and you've already signed in, you can click on the Me tab. And here you can actually change your password. As you can see here, there's an opportunity to put my new password in and then to confirm it. And once I save the changes, uh, 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 it'll be um, and it, it tells me that they did confirm here with the check marks. And I save the changes. Your member information was successfully updated. There's another way to do it, though, and that is I can, uh, if I if I sign out, uh, this is the best way to show you when I'm actually on the sign-in page for the community. I can set my password by clicking on I don't know my password, and what it will do is it will uh, it will send me an email with a link for resetting my password. I'm not going to, uh, to go through and do that right now, but if I put in my email address, it will actually send me an email that with the information for resetting my password. And that way, there can't be unauthorized uh, a resetting of the password because it will have to go to my email address, and, and only I have access to that in my email program, presumably, where the link for resetting the password will be sent. using a new password. Okay. The next step that we're going to go over very quickly is adding meals. Actually, I'm going to go back to Team Amelia, to Amelia's Helping Hands, rather, to that community. So here I am back at Amelia's Helping Hands. I'm going to go to the calendar. And a lot of times a member will sign up for a, uh, a dinner. Maybe it's next week or a month from now. And they're really not sure what they're going to bring. Because during the sign-up process, and if I wanted to uh, click on dinner here, and I, and I actually wanted to sign up. I'm going to click on sign up now for February 25th. Uh, this, if for any of you that have ever signed up for a task, the way that it's done is through a, a, an email template here where it's coming from me. It's going to be going to the coordinator of the community. It already has the subject in here and it says I'm signing up for this particular dinner. And I'm not sure what I want to bring. So I'm going to just leave this blank. I, I can see that around this date, somebody was bringing uh, spaghetti with meatballs and chicken enchiladas, and I'm not really sure what I want. So I'm just going to leave it blank. Uh, so I will send this email. And it says a confirmation email will be sent to, to me as well as to the coordinator. So now when I come back to the calendar and I look at the 25th, sure enough, there I am. Uh, this shows that I have, I'm scheduled to bring dinner that day. So if I view the details, and this is how I would actually go in and add the, uh, the meal that I'm, that I'm going to bring now. I'm going to do this slightly different. I'm going to go back to the home page. I'm going to go to the calendar. And it was actually on the 18th that I br brought dinner, and I just want to put in the, that this is after the fact. Here it is. It's already been put in here. If, if it had been left blank, I can actually click on Change Meal. So it turns out I didn't bring spaghetti uh, with meatballs. I, I instead brought uh, tuna casserole. And uh, so I can save these changes. And now, when the next time anybody comes into the calendar and they want to view the recent and upcoming meals, they can see that on the 18th that uh, Josh Chapman brought 
tuna casserole, green salad, and cookies. So again, in review, if I want to go in after I've brought my meal and post what it was that I actually brought, I can click on the calendar or click on the date, either one. I'll click on calendar here. And then I click on the date for which I brought the meal. And where it says change meal in this activity panel, I click on change meal. And I now have the opportunity to actually enter what it was that I brought. Back to you, Brooks. OK, great. So if we just keep the Team Amelia or Amelia's Helping Hands up, I just wanted to point out the next um, resource for you all. We're going to move into, just want to spend a moment or two reminding you of the resources that we're providing. Um, in every Lots of Helping Hands community, we have a section called Lots of Resources for You. And this is where we have information from the Lots of Helping Hands team. There are tips and features that we highlight here. We also um, can highlight the resources from our nonprofit partners and then have messaging in here to connect with the Lots of Helping Hands community. In addition, in our caregiving and elder care communities that you're not seeing right here on the demonstration site, we also highlight resources from some of our partners, um, industry and, and nonprofit organizations that might have content. Um, right now within the communities, we have information related to um, hospice and nursing home care, uh, information about preventing um, heart disease and COPD, a wide range of things that are really in there to help you with specific things and just provide some additional public service to our community members. And so we wanted to launch a poll right now, um, and I'm not sure how many of you have already viewed the Lots of Resources for You section, but we are very, very eager to uh, bolster this section with more information. We know from um, talking with you all and, and even just looking at um, the, our traffic that uh, many of you are spending a lot of time um, you know, in your private community helping your loved one. And so if there are ways that we can provide you with helpful information um, as you participate in your community, we'll, we want to be able to do that. So if you would um, indulge us and go ahead and take a look at the quick poll and share what resources you think would be helpful to you um, in your community, whether you are looking for additional resources for family caregivers, if you'd like to see specific health information, links to books or articles and blogs, opportunity to purchase perhaps discount products or services for your family, um, and uh, perhaps other opportunities as well. This, we're just starting to uh, explore what we might be able to include in the, this section, and so we thought we'd take the opportunity with all of you on the call to see if you had any initial ideas. So why, while those results are coming in, um, I'll just go ahead and highlight one of our most important resources, which is of our nonprofit partners. As many of you probably know, we partner with more than 50 nonprofit organizations that provide our service to uh, their constituents. But there are several that we um, partner with in, in more strategic ways even. Um, we launched in November the opportunity for our members to actually add and identify our resources from our nonprofit partners in their community. So if you are um, working with or helping a military or veterans family, um, there are resources from one of our nonprofit partners, Wounded Warrior Project, um, that you can identify with in, in your community. If you are um, helping a family or neighbor coping with lung disease or muscular dystrophy or uh, leukemia, lymphoma, all of these organizations have resources in um, within their private within the communities that are created. So, if you've already created your community um, and you haven't identified your resources, these resources in your community, um, you can do that from the site options area of your of your administration tab, and we can walk you through that. But anyone that creates a community from LotsHelpingHands.com can also choose to identify their community with one of these nonprofit resources. And so we hope to see more and more nonprofits uh, join this part of our program and certainly welcome feedback from members as to um, new nonprofits you want to see there based on the experiences that you're having. 
So those were just the two that we wanted to make sure we called to your attention um, as we go forward today. And I think we are actually very much on schedule, which is good news. We can open it up for Q&A. And um, we, I'm going to go ahead and turn that back to you, Hal, uh, to answer some questions that are coming in across um, the chat feature. There was one that came over in an email prior to the webinar today that I thought we could also address, which was how uh, folks can invite multiple members. There was a question that came in over email, uh, a member or a coordinator, rather, who had more than 70 members that um, he wanted to add to his community and, and looking for easy ways to do that. So um, why don't you go ahead and address that one and then any others that you see coming over on the dashboard. Great. Uh, regarding the, that question, which, which is a common question we get on the support desk, if people want to add, in this particular case, uh, 70 members to the community all at once, is there a fast way to do that? Is there an easy way to do that? In fact, there is several different ways. The first is you can actually, and I'm going to sign out here as a way to show this to you, the coordinator of the community can actually send an email to all the people using their, using their own email program, can send an email to people that they want to become a member of the community and give them this URL, the URL for the uh, particular community, um, and give that the, this, what we call the, the sign-in page for the community, and send that, that address to members in their, uh, in their email program. And, and tell them to put in interested in becoming a member of this community. Uh, when people do that, they become a pending member. So I can put in and uh, so if I wanted to become a member of this community, put in my email and I would say, uh, I, I know Amelia well, I'm her neighbor. And then an email will be sent to the designated coordinators of, T of Amelia's Helping Hands. And they can, and I will, show, I will show up as what's called a pending member. And uh, I, the, the coordinators of that community of, of Amelia's Helping Hands will get an email saying that uh, Hal Chapel has requested to become a member of this community. And let's, I'm going to show you what that looks like. So I've signed in, and if I go to the administration tab under pending members, it shows me a list of uh, the names of all of the pending members in this community. And I can click on this, it says I know Amelia well, I'm her neighbor, and I can approve it. I can say, uh, nobody here really knows who you are, can you give me some more information? So that's one way to do it. In review, the coordinator can send the email, the, the web address of the community to members of, of the community uh, with the URL. Uh, here's one that says, is there a way, this is from Deborah, is there a way to reinvite people who have not signed in and verified their email address? Uh, and the answer to that is yes, there is. Under the, as a coordinator, I can go to the uh, administration tab and click on notify members. And basically, I can change the subject line. I could change it to you know, a please Please verify your email address. Uh, this will it'll have the message of the, the, last, the last message that I sent out this way. And I can send this to all members who haven't yet signed in. So I can click here. And now when I send the email, this, this notification of being a member in the community will, uh, will be sent to all members who haven't yet signed in. Alternatively, I could just send it to a specific member if, if that's what I wanted. And these are members, these are the 14 members that haven't signed in yet. Great. Okay, well, that's um, great. And when I, I see a lot of question marks, so I know that there are other um, questions that we will uh, certainly respond to you individually via email. I want to just show the next slide to share with you what our plans are for next month in terms of the webinar. We will continue to offer webinars that are primarily tips and feature based. Um, we'll also have webinars with uh, guest speakers on various topics related to caregiving um, as well. Next month, we will continue to provide ideas for how to customize your community. We will address um, how you can raise uh, funds for the recipient family within your community. We know many of you are doing that. Um, how to continue to engage members at a distance, adding new tasks, 
and learning more about the administration tab. These are just a few of the topics that we've heard from our members uh, continually. So we'll continue to build that agenda and look forward to your participation in, in the future uh, webinars. Um, if you still have questions, you may uh, easily contact us um, at our info at Lots of Helping Hands email address or um, by calling us as well. And then our final reminders that I hope you all um, already have in your mind, but that the service certainly is free and private and secure. As Hal mentioned a couple times, you can be a member um, of more than one community that we do provide regular member support. And so while we are sorry we weren't able to get to all your questions today, we certainly will reply to your questions and, and look forward to supporting you as you move along with your community. Um, we do encourage you to remember to use the service to coordinate other needs um, and to make sure to, to share it with, um, with those in your life who may have a need for lots of helping hands. We do have our own community that we consider you all to be a part of. Um, we have a Facebook presence and are looking at other ways to share the stories and experiences of community here at Lots of Helping Hands. And so we invite you to participate in that on an ongoing basis and continue to engage with us. If you go to our website at lotshelpinghands.com, we will update the webinar page with the recording from today's session. So uh, check back for that as well, and we'll look forward to your future participation. As you exit the webinar today, you will be prompted to take a survey. It's very brief, um, but we do ask that you just take one moment and uh, give us your thoughtful feedback, um, any new ideas that you might have, suggestions. Again, as I said at the beginning, all of us here on behalf of the entire team, we really are committed to having our service meet your needs. And so the only way for us to do that is if we know what they are. So please take a minute and answer those survey questions uh, and continue sharing with us so that we can continue supporting you um, in building community. With that, I want to thank Hal Chappell for participating with us today um, and thank all of you for taking the time out of your day to learn more about the service and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks very much. Thank you, Brooks.